So, you're more than these physical bodies. We like to just let you sit with that for a minute. It's logical, isn't it, that you didn't just show up here. When you put your world in context, you have to acknowledge that there's a whole lot more going on than what is being fashioned from the physical human consciousness. So you are an eternal consciousness on a trajectory. And here you are, a part of that trajectory focused into this time-space reality, into this body. But the larger part of the consciousness that is the eternal you remains non-physically focused. Focused upon you, focused with you, right there with you in everything that you are doing. But the non-physical part of you, that eternal part of you, that solid, sure vibration of unconditional love, you got to say from your physical format, oh, well, yeah, pretty easy to be unconditional when you're not here where the conditions are. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It is easy for us to remain unconditional when we're not all twirled up in the nitty gritty of what you're all twirled up in. But that's what makes this the perfect recipe. The source energy part of you remains non-physically focused, aware of you, but solid in the vibration of all that is well. And as you are here in your physical body, exploring the contrast, in your exploration, in your deciphering, in your living and observing of it, you know what you don't want, which causes you to know what you do want. You are giving birth to constant new preferences. It's what the evolution of every species is about. So as you are giving birth to these new rockets of desire, we call them that because they are vibrational. And from your point of view, you would see them go fast. You would see them exude out from you. Rockets of desire. So life just continues to call you further and further and further along your path. The question is, how sensitive are you to the vibration of that calling? And how really on your path are you? If you are in this moment loving someone, you're on your path. But if you're mad at them, you've stepped off into the weeds for a minute. <laughs> and we know some of them are annoying. Some things that people do, some things that people think, some things that people think about you, some things that you are focused upon are hard to take. They don't feel good when you focus upon them. But we want you to leave this room fully understanding that the reason that they don't feel good when you focus upon them is because the larger part of you isn't focused upon them. And your attention to them is taking you from your path. Now, when anyone starts talking about a path, it makes you squirm a little bit because it sounds like, oh yeah, so it is all pre-decided for me. Somebody already figured it out and here I am, a puppet on a string looking for my path. And we say, exactly. No, we don't say that. <laughs> it's not like that at all. Here you are in your physical body carving out your path. You're carving out the path. But yes, you had intentions when you came into this physical body that were the path that you were walking along when you made the decision to come here. You knew that you were worthy. And when you get off that path, you feel awful. You knew that you are valuable. And when you get off that path, you feel awful. You knew that this was going to be a wonderful experience. And when you get off that path, you feel awful. You knew that you are the creator of your own experience. And when you get off that path, you feel awful. You had all of these intentions, all of this knowing that you have amassed from life. And the source within you stands in complete knowledge of that path. So here you are in your physical body, making decisions, all kinds of spectacular, detailed decisions. And as you make those decisions in vibrational alignment, in other words, you can be or do or have anything that you want and feel wonderful as long as you're not mad at yourself while you're doing it. That's off your path. 
you can be or do or have anything and the source that is within you will support you completely and you will feel wonderful unless you're mad at someone else unless you're condemning something else unless you're looking right at what you do not want and making that a lifestyle of vibrational habit and that's really what we're talking about we're talking about the vibrational frequencies or the thoughts or the energy these words are all dovetailing that you are generating there is a powerful law in this vibrational universe of which we are all a part we are calling law of attraction and what that law is it, it is the manager of the vibrational frequencies of this universe it's the manager of the thought vibration it's really the manager of all vibrations but in the context of this gathering when you think a thought law of attraction responds to the thought that you're thinking and brings you other thoughts that match it other thoughts of same frequency so when you focus upon the well-being of something law of attraction will bring you more thoughts like it when you focus upon the not well-being of something law of attraction will bring you other thoughts like it and as you focus there in those early stages of those easy thoughts law of attraction will bring you more thoughts like that until eventually you will have a significant enough vibrational pattern or trajectory going with that thought that you might even say I believe that that's all a belief is a belief is just a thought you keep thinking that's all it is in the early days of interacting with us Esther argued with us about that she would say to us Abraham but it's true I know you don't think I should think about it but it is a true thing and therefore doesn't it deserve some of my attention and we say there are so many things that are true that you want to practice until you believe them and until you attract them until you live them fully and there are some things that are true that you don't feel that way about just be discerning be a selective sifter choose what you think about but Esther argued and some of you do too but Abraham sometimes I do not think I am choosing this thought I think this thought chose me and we say we know how that feels when you get that momentum going when you get a certain amount of momentum going it plays out the laws of the universe that you know the laws of physics you know it's like that put your car at the top of the hill San Francisco is what comes to Esther's mind because she could not believe those hills that people were actually driving up and down put your car at the top of one of those hills and take it out of gear take the brake off and just test to see what the laws of physics are about just nudge that car just a little bit from behind just nudge it and watch what happens next there's no question about what will happen next is there the weight the gravity the inertia the laws of physics are known by you experientially you know what's going to happen to that car but if you come to your senses and say oh wait I already know the outcome of this I choose something different so you step right out in front of that car and it bumps up against you it stops the momentum stops right there doesn't it you wouldn't want to be at the bottom of that hill stopping that momentum so law of attraction is synonymous with momentum because when you give your attention to something law of attraction will bring more and more and more and more and more that's why you want to be discerning about what you think about and it's also why you don't want to be at the bottom of the hill trying to stop your thoughts that's when Esther said my thoughts thinking me Abraham I know you think I should think otherwise but this thought has got hold of me big time and we say yes sometimes it happens that way and you really want it to happen that way when it's thoughts that are of benefit to you you really want those thoughts to have hold of you when it's thoughts of your value of your worthiness of your worth of the value and worth of others you want those thoughts to get hold of you you want to believe deeply you want to have absolute knowing first you think it then you think it more 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 then you believe it then you believe it then you think it more then you think it more then you think it more then you know it and the reason you know it is because what you believe manifests it manifests it gives you full knowledge but what humans mostly don't understand is that you have control over what moves from vibration into reality you can turn thoughts into things deliberately you can you are turning thoughts into things all the time indeliberately why not get hold of this why not start thinking purposefully but the only way that you can begin to turn thoughts to things in a deliberate way is by inserting into your awareness the factor the all-important factor of how you feel 
because how you feel is your guidance that lets you know how much momentum you got going toward what you want and how much introduction of contradiction you've got going on one of the things that you have going for you there are a lot of things but significant to this topic one of the things that is really beneficial to you and we love you so much you know what's coming next when we tell you we love you <laughs> we're preparing you for hearing something one of the things that you've got going for you is that you are uh, did we tell you we love you <laughs> you are fickle and frivolous with your thoughts and the advantage of that is you don't get hold of any thought wanted or unwanted and stay with it very long you are distracted ooh shiny <laughs> so we want to help you to not freak out about the thoughts that you've been thinking when we started talking about the science of deliberate creation oh you are in the audience going <laughs> cancel cancel <laughs> trying to <laughs> suck the thought back before <laughs> law of attraction got hold of it and we don't want you to be guarded about your thoughts because you're starting right here right now and well-being is dominant we just want you to be more deliberate about the thoughts you think by caring more about how you feel and it's helpful to understand how it all fits together isn't it so you were source energy and still are but a large part of you remained in that non-physical place the largest part of you is still non-physical while a part of that consciousness is here with you so here you are in your bodies you're beautiful you are brilliant you are exploring contrast all around you knowing what you don't want knowing what you do want and continually adding new preferences to the whole of that which you are becoming so that non-physical part of you resides in a vibrational reality we've been calling it your vortex or your vortex of attraction is your vortex it's a vibrational version of you it's the vibrational version of you of all that you want that has full potential of manifesting fully so that you can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it and others can too as they behold you but in order to be deliberate about that it's important that you know that there are steps to the process and the first step is you are launching rockets of desire you're asking you're asking all day every day you never stop asking don't ask yourself to stop asking you can't stop asking the trajectory that we are all on the trajectory that you are most about who you really are why you're here the environment that surrounds you the details of the environment that surrounds you all queued up in order to evoke from you new awarenesses of who you are and what you further want so don't fight that just go with it you can't stop it just let the desire flow forth from you step one step two is that desire that you have launched becomes part of this vibrational reality that the inner being part of you the soul part of you the source part of you the non-physical part of you embraces fully and becomes in the moment that you launch the rocket that non-physical part of you is now a reality and law of attraction is responding to that reality also so now there's a you standing in your body thinking what you're thinking about that desire that you launched and there's the source energy part of you standing in the vortex thinking about that desire that you launched so there are potentially two different perspectives about that you getting what we're saying there's the perspective that knows not only that it's possible but that it's certain that's your inner beings perspective knowing that the path will unfold knowing that you will find your way knowing that it will be really fun going toward it and knowing that you're gonna like it when you get there but knowing that it's not just getting there that it's all about it's the journey on the way to it the life is really about that's what your inner being knows that's what your inner being knows and bees about the desire that you launch and here you are in your physical body maybe not so much knowing so much of that because you're usually if you're like most humans noticing that what you want has not yet happened so your awareness is upon where is it or how's it going to get here when's it going to get here who's going to bring it and how's it going to get here how long is it going to take before it gets here and why isn't it here yet and how come that guy's got it and I don't have it yet <laughs> and so as you focus in those ways you feel the uneasiness you feel the discomfort and sometimes you even say hmm I think I felt better before I wanted that thing that I do not have 
And we want you to understand that you got to get over that. You got to get over that. You got to get over that. You just got to get over that because you're not ever going to stop launching desires. So you're always going to be creating the gap between what is manifested and what is in the process of being manifested.